down the rabbit hole of rock and roll's past, present, and future. It's Barstool Rockers with your hosts, Jim Finn and Dan Michaels. That is a brilliant idea. Alice Cooper doing Alice's Restaurant. I know. It'd be awesome. That'd be a great Thanksgiving benefit to do. A few years ago. We gotta get old Chuck. Well, and of course, we just recently talked with Chuck Garrett, Alice Cooper's bassist and frontman for Bisto Blanco. But a few years ago, Alice did the Raise the Dead tour in which at the end of the night, he performed a whole bunch of cover versions by bands and artists that are no longer on this earth and have dearly departed. And so <clears throat> Arlo's still with us, Arlo's right? Arlo's very much with right, us. Right, and, right. And still a grand chap, if, if you ask me. Uh, right. But that doesn't mean that Alice couldn't do a version of Alice's Restaurant. Oh, it would be perfect. And can you imagine the topics that could be done there? Just the, the humor right? spins to it. Oh, that would be perfect for him. You know, good Monday to you, my lords and ladies. It's the Barstool Rockers podcast, and we are back at it for a Monday morning with you. Uh, I do hope you've been weathering the weather well in your portion of the country. Wow, that's a ton. Uh, that's that's uh, not easy. That's just a bad she way. Six I'm thousand. trying to be a morning guy. Hey, how you doing? Everybody! <laughs> stacks and stacks of incredible wax. <laughs> I'll catch you on the flip flop. Oh boy, this <laughs> could go down. Yeah, this could fast. go real. So let's get out of that <laughs> section and uh, let's head toward uh, today's topic: Collective Soul. Yeah, a little chat. Twenty-five years with Collective Soul, even it's, though it's been longer. Yeah, but it's funny how time flies because I remember when that first album came out and it was pretty massive. You know, once. Shine started getting airplay. That band took off. So today we have a chance to talk with Mr. Roland. Good morning. How you doing? I'm doing great. How you doing? This is pretty early for a rock and roller. How, what, what? <laughs> I have two children and married now. So when I'm home, this is this is this is sleeping in late. <laughs> yeah, you're used to it. <laughs> hey, listen. This is <clears throat> this is a big year for you guys, uh, Collective Soul and. You know, what's really cool is I've never been good at math, but as far as as I can tell, Collective Soul's debut album, Hints, Allegations, and Things Left Unsaid, was released 26 years ago. So that is, that's kind of... That's it. Yeah, but on a major 25 years ago, because that was me in a basement shipping it out. 26 years ago trying to get a publishing deal so I don't even really count that yeah <laughs> writing demos and then all of a sudden you've got this this huge album that burst onto the scene and now we've got a new collective soul album yes we do and it is called blood and you know here's one of the things I, I've always loved about uh, your songwriting and collective soul in general is that there are so many different styles you cover so many genres on this album it's it it takes me back to those days when bands like zeppelin and queen and the beatles put out an album and you would just hear so many different styles Is well you that, just mentioned our heroes so that's where we learned it from that was you know, my question yeah that's we we enjoy that and then i think what we're going to start doing next is get some more guys involved in singing like the beatles had four singers I mean, if you want to call Ringo a singer, I will give him credit. Oh, uh, come on. That's a joke. I love Ringo. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> My son is named Lennon. Do you don't think I love the Beatles? Yes. Um, yes. You know, Queen, uh, the Cars, who I'm a big fan of, you know, had Ben and Rick. So I think that's one of the next things we're going to do soon is, you know, uh, it, it takes a second for the guys to, to build the confidence after 25 years. Either you can sing or you can't sing. Will Will thinks he can sing now, so I'm sure he'll be singing <laughs> on the next record. Well, now, this album took a little while to piece together. When did you start writing the songs for this at new album, Blood? Uh, we started two years ago. We went into the studio for two weeks, recorded 10 songs, and then last year went into a studio and for 10 days and recorded 10 more songs. So we originally intended it to be a double album, and then our management was like, you guys do realize it's 2019. Nobody does double albums anymore. <laughs> so we split it up. So the, the first part comes out this year, and the next one will come out next year. Oh, okay. And then in our own record collections, because I'm sure you're putting this out on vinyl. 
right? Yes. Okay. So in our own record collections, we can piece together Collective Souls version of the White Album. So it, it's going to be a double album for me. So <laughs> it, it, and for me too. It, and it was recorded that way. To be honest with you, it's because the other one's done. They were. All, it was recorded as a double album. It just so happened that you know, in today's time and era, it's just it just it, it's asking a lot out of. I mean, I, like I said, I have two boys. I mean, for them to sit down and listen to Goodbye Yellow Brick Road, they're, they're, I, they're, I couldn't make them. I'd have to strap I'd have to have duct tape or super glue or something. Their mind moves too fast. That's why we split it up. There is there is definitely a collective soul sound, um, but how does that work for you as a songwriter? Um because I don't hear the band repeating itself to, I, I never hear a collective soul. I always hear different, different songs, different melodies. I, I don't hear you guys regurgitating the same stuff. How, how do you draw inspiration to come up with all these great songs? Once again, I think you go back to what you said earlier. Our heroes were, are, are the Beatles. You go to Zeppelin queen, um, even a band like the Cars, to me, where they did different synthesizers and different sounds, they just weren't afraid to. Once again, you got to stay within the cornerstone, and then from there you can expand. You don't want to lose your core. But you know, our heroes were ones that were not afraid to um, I- expand. I mean, you can go to ELO. Tom Petty even did it, even when he went more acoustic. You know, it was just different. What is still was Tom Petty, but at the core. But he expanded. The last time we had a chance to see you guys in our neighborhood was when Collective Soul played the Lining Kugels family reunion at the Northern Wisconsin State Fairgrounds. And oh I, yeah, I had a, I had a chance to talk with uh, your brother Dean, and I asked him about how that works being in a band with one of your siblings because history has dictated times where that hasn't always worked out specifically the Davies brothers from the kinks or the black crows and the black crows doesn't really work. Out. Uh, is it difficult? Is it difficult to be in a band with your brother? I mean, how does that work? I, well, I always say everybody brings up the kinks and I'm always saying I would never break one of my guitars over Dean. I value <laughs> my guitar so much. Um, I, it, it's it's no different than being with a, some someone else. Actually, I think it's easier, you know, because he and I respect each other. We came from a strong family, and if we did anything stupid, our mom would come in and <laughs> still do the old Southern spanking on us. So <laughs> I, I find it to be a blessing and really, really easy and fun. We enjoy each other's company, and, and um, I think that's helped a lot, just, just to have your family, because you're gone so much, and it's nice to have someone that's family on the road and you're out on the road now then now's the time tour you're out on the road with the, the Jim Blossoms uh, mm-hmm. and so how's the tour going it's awesome I love those guys you know we've we've known them for 25 years you know basically and uh, to be able to we've always done festivals together but the to, to, but to travel with each other it's really been a lot of fun Robin and the guys are just wonderful to be around and Robin comes up and we do an R.E.M. song together and it's it's just cool. it's it's like a family, and that's the way it should be. Now, a few years ago, you guys did a concert with the Atlanta Symphony Youth Orchestra, and you put the event out on DVD. And it's such an amazing concert. Um, do you see any time in the future where you'll be working with an orchestra again? Because your music translates well in orchestral settings. <laughs> Yeah, we we talked about that last week, to be honest with you. So, um, you know, maybe, you know, we're kind of celebrating our 25th anniversary from our first major release. So our 30th anniversary, you look ahead on things like that. You have to. That's part of business. And the 30th anniversary, maybe we go in. By then, we'll have blood out. The next record will be out. And I've already written the next one. So we'll have, you know, a good 12 recordings to choose from. So the 30th anniversary might be a fun thing to do. And do it again in Atlanta, because that's where we're from, and do it with the Youth Orchestra, which was um, very special for us, because we raised a lot of money for them, and it brings music to kids. And there's there's days um, I still meet kids that played at that show. You know, they're grown grown 
men and women now, but they they talked about how special it was for them, and I'm always like, it was just as much for us. It was a very special moment. Well, we thank you for your time today, sir, and we look forward to the new album, Blood. Uh, loving what we hear so far, and we hope to catch you on tour. I know you're going to be playing Summerfest real soon here in Milwaukee, so we'll be seeing you out on the road, and we thank you for your time. Best of luck thank with this so album. Thank you so much. Everybody go, everybody go get you a Liney Kugel. Enjoy the day. <laughs> All right. Thanks, man. I'm personally convinced that there's a little stretch there where you were setting up your wife for future purchases. Oh, the because you were talking about collection. the second album, uh-huh. and then you're talking about the DVD. Hun, I gotta get them. I gotta have the complete set. <laughs> Somehow, my wife always gets dragged into this conversation on the podcast. Well, it's only when uh, it comes to your collection. That's all. <laughs> Although, in the Rick Nielsen interview, Rick made a comment about how smart she is. The only dumb move she made was marrying me. So uh, well, I'm sure that one probably he tied it her. back to himself right, too. Right. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, come on. Yeah. Love you, honey. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but we had, yeah, I mean, collective soul, uh, the gin blossom solo sound, that whole little, that little trio, that would be a great tour to have out on, on a, like mm-hmm. a, like a festival season tour. Mm-hmm. And we're definitely yeah. headed into festival season, especially here in the Northwoods. I mean, we've got our own beloved rock fest. We've got summer fest down in Milwaukee. We got the Minnesota state fair. They always knock it out of the park. We've got moon dance jam and all these different events, collective soul, of course, on their way up here. But yeah, I could, I could really see that trio going out on the road together. I've seen Collective Soul a few times, both at Rockfest, our Rockfest, and Northern Wisconsin State Fair. I've seen, I've seen them a few times, and they always put on a great show. Ed Rowland's a great frontman. He just well, and I like the point of conversation where he talked about the band always having their cornerstone. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they've always got mm-hmm. their reference point, and I like that. And I like that you know he looks at his brother as a as a sound partner, and I like that he respects you know. Just respects the family, respects the team, and everything like that. We didn't have a chance to ask him about Tommy Shaw's guest appearance on the album, because I guess Tommy plays Dobro and does some backup vocals. Dobro. Dobro. Yes. <laughs> Tommy's going to start becoming the Richard Marks character. <laughs> oh, don't say that. <laughs> where, where he kind of appeared on all these different... Remember Poco? Oh, yeah. That project oh, yeah. where yeah, yeah. the little Richard Marks yep. in the background. Yep. So, there you go. Hold on to the nights, baby. There you go. So if you get a chance to see Collective Soul with Gin Blossoms at Summerfest or they're playing somewhere else in, is it Greenville, Wisconsin, I believe they're playing in this summer. So go see them because it's a it's a good good night of entertainment. And if they're coming into your neighborhood, by all means, for sure. go see them. Yeah. And if you enjoyed what we do on this podcast, it's called Barstool Rockers. Please consider giving us a, a favorable rating and subscribing at iTunes, Spotify, the iHeartRadio app. I, I believe it's actually Apple Podcasts right now. i got to update the script. No. Or wherever you're listening to us. Every positive review helps new listeners find the show. And if you don't like what we're doing, well, pick a name of a podcast and use that. So. You may listen to some of these things with huge staffs. For us, it's, it's just me and Finn. With help from uh, Stasia, who does our, our theme music, and Joe Kelly, the guy whose voice is pretty much born on the shoulders of cherubs in front of him. <laughs> if you know of someone who might enjoy what we're doing, please share today's episode with them so we can try to grow this thing into something the boss won't deny knowing about. And if uh, you want more information about today's episode, contact us to read up on uh, Collective Soul and everything like that. Visit the website, barstoolrockers.com. You can get us by email at barstoolrockers at gmail.com and on the Facebook page, which oddly enough is called Barstool Rockers. I know, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. (laughs) And of course, thank you all for listening. 